This apparition has yet to be approved, yet certain aspects, such as the Sacred Heart scapular, have full approval. It's important to also note that apparitions can take up to centuries to be approved. The Church has also approved the healing that Estelle received as a true miracle, and her bedroom has been converted into a chapel with many faithful visiting the shrine in Pelavas I. Pope Leo XIII, in May of 1894, approved the Art Confraternity of Our Mother, All Merciful, of Pelavas I. The Congregation of Rites, in a decree issued on April 4, 1900, granted approval to the scapular of the Sacred Heart. We will now simply tell the story of this apparition, as it is not well known but bears good fruit. You will notice how Our Lady interacts with the visionary as both queen and mother. Estelle Faguet was born in 1843 in Champaign, France. At 14 years old, Estelle found a job as a laundress to help her family. At 15 years old, Estelle became seriously ill but recovered. However, this illness left her weak and frail. She returned to her job as laundress and continued working until the age of 17 and then was employed by the Sisters of St. Vincent de Paul at their hospice for the poor. This work prompted a desire to join a convent, and at the age of 19, she joined the Augustians' nursing sisters, but was forced to leave while still a novice, after tripping and falling down the stairs and twisting her ankle. This sprain developed medical complications, and the doctor was worried that he would have to amputate her foot. The ankle did heal, however, Estelle did not return to the convent and found work as a lady's maid. She did this work for the next 10 years. Sadly, because of her frail constitution and the hard work over the years, she once again fell very ill and was diagnosed with tuberculosis. After a few months in the hospital, the Countess, whom she worked for, brought her to her home, hoping that the fresh air and sun would bring about good health. Unfortunately, this didn't work and Estelle continued to get worse. Estelle had been praying novenas all this time, and now, as a last effort, she wrote a touching and faith-filled letter to the Blessed Mother. You know that I am your child and I love you. Therefore, obtain for me, I beseech you, from your divine Son, my restoration to health. It is for his glory that I ask it. Behold my parents' sorrow. O Mary, you know that I am their all. If because of my sins I cannot be completely cured, you can at least obtain for me a little strength of body so that I may be able to earn my living and provide for my parents, my father and my mother, who, as you can see, are on the eve of being obliged to beg for their bread. The thought of this causes me intense suffering. Think, good mother, of what you endured when Jesus was stretched on the cross. I put my trust in you, my mother. I know that if you wish it, your son will cure me. He knows how much I wish to be among the number of his spouses. Deign to listen to my supplications and to intercede for me with your Divine Son. May he restore me to health, if such be his good pleasure. If not, may his holy will be done. May he at least grant me perfect resignation, and may that resignation contribute to my salvation and to that of my parents. My heart is yours, Holy Virgin. Keep it always, and may it always be a pledge of my love and gratitude for your maternal goodness. See the sorrow of my parents. Estelle lived for another few months, however, she continued to suffer and get worse. On top of this suffering, she also developed an abdominal tumor. This made it impossible for her to keep anything down. Estelle had resigned herself to dying and asked a friend to take her letter and bury it under the Blessed Virgin statue after her death. The doctor was summoned once again and taking one look at Estelle said it would be heartless to prescribe medicine which would only extend her agony, for she had only a few hours left to live. On February 14, 1876, the devil appeared at the foot of Estelle's bed. At the same time, Our Lady appeared at the head of the bed. Estelle writes of this encounter. On the night of February 14, a devil stood at the foot of my bed. As soon as he appeared, the Holy Mother appeared on the other side. I was scared. The devil looked terrible. However, when he noticed Mary's presence, he took a step back to escape. Our Lady asked, What are you doing here? 
Can you not see that she bears my mark and the mark of my son? He disappeared with a strange gesture. Then Our Lady spoke to me gently. Do not be afraid, because you are my child. It is important to note here that when Estelle was 14, she had joined the Children of Mary, and she also wore the Miraculous Medal. Now looking at Estelle with tenderness, she said, Courage and patience. My son takes special care of you. You will suffer five days longer in honor of the five wounds of my son. On Saturday, you will either be dead or alive. If my son allows you to live, I want you to announce my glory. The next night, the devil again appeared, although this time he stayed further away. Our Lady immediately appeared, telling her, Do not be afraid, I am here. This time my son has allowed himself to be prevailed upon. He grants you life. On Saturday, you will be cured. But now Estelle protested, But my good mother, if I had my choice, I would prefer to die, now that I'm well prepared. Mary replied with a smile, Ungrateful one, if my son gives you life, he does it because you need it. What has he given to man more precious to life? And being restored to life does not mean you will be exempt from suffering. No, you will suffer. You will not be exempt from sorrow. That is what makes life meritorious. If my son has been moved, it's on account of your great resignation and your patience. Do not lose your fruit thereof by your choice. Then Our Lady showed Estelle her past. Seeing how many things she had done, even the smallest offenses and how they offended God, made Estelle so upset that she couldn't even beg for forgiveness or mercy. Our Lady then disappeared, leaving Estelle to contemplate on her sins, and she suffered for the rest of the night. But, as Our Lady had said, each night was to suffer in honor of the five wounds of Christ, and Estelle's suffering was not just to expiate her own sins, but for the world. It is understandable, then, why the devil continued to appear as accuser. The third night, the devil appeared again, but was so far away this time that Estelle could hardly see him. Our Lady then appeared and encouraged her, saying, Come now, take courage, my child. Estelle, still shaken and shamed of her sins, trembled at being in the presence of the Blessed Virgin. Our Lady said to her, All this has passed. By your resignation, you have expiated these faults. Estelle felt a little encouraged, but then Our Lady showed Estelle the good deeds that she had done in her life. She saw that they were few and that she had many sins in comparison. Again, Our Lady encouraged her, saying, Some good deeds and persevering prayers you offered me touched my motherly heart, especially that letter you wrote to me in September. I was most touched by the sentence, Look at the poverty of my parents. If I am absent, they will have to beg for bread. Remember the suffering that happened to you when your son, Jesus Christ, hung nailed to the cross. I showed this letter to my son. Your parents need you. Stay true to this task in the future. Do not lose the favors that have been given you and proclaim my praise. On the fourth apparition, Our Lady appeared alone but was silent as everything from past visions passed before Estelle's eyes again. When it was over, Our Lady showed her a white marble slab or plaque bearing the words, I called upon Mary in the depths of my misery. She obtained for me from her son my complete cure. The plaque was not plain white, but had a golden rose on each corner, and on the top a heart on fire crowned with roses pierced by a sword. She then said, You will publish my glory, make every effort. And then she disappeared. On the fifth apparition, it was very beautiful. Estelle writes of this. The Blessed Virgin did not remain at the foot of my bed. She approached to the middle of my bed curtains. How beautiful she was! She remained a long time, silent and motionless, standing in the midst of a vapor. She was smiling. She reminded me of her promises to publish her glory. I once more saw the marble slab, but this time it was no longer white. In four corners, there were golden rosebuds, a golden heart emitted flames. It was transpierced with a sword and surrounded by a crown of roses. These words were inscribed on it. I called upon Mary, full of sorrows. From her son, she obtained my full recovery. Estelle promised again to do all in her power for Mary's glory. 
She then asked Our Lady if she should change her state in life. Our Lady replied, One can be saved in any state. Where you are, you can do a great deal of good, and you can publish my glory. She continued on sorrowfully, What most afflicts me is the want of respect shown to my son in Holy Communion, and the attitude of prayer taken by many when the mind is occupied with other things. I say this for people who pretend to be pious. Estelle asked her if she should write that down in her records. Our Lady answered, Yes, yes, and publish my glory. But before doing so, await the advice from your confessor and director, for people will endeavor to entrap you. They will treat you as a visionary, as a person of disordered imagination, as a fool. But pay no attention to all that. Be faithful to me. I will assist you. After this vision, Estelle felt a lot of pain and couldn't feel her right hand. She offered this suffering to God in reparation. But after resting for a little while, she began to feel better. It wasn't very long after that when she realized she was cured. The next morning, the priest who had visited her was expecting Estelle to be dead and was very surprised to not only find her alive, but also healthy. She said to him, I'm cured. Indeed, she was back to complete health, except for her right arm, which was still swollen and unusable. The priest was skeptical. He said, The Blessed Virgin can obtain your cure if she will. As soon as you receive Holy Communion today, try to make the sign of the cross with your right hand. If you succeed, it will be a sign that what you say is true. When the priest came back later to give her Holy Communion, in the presence of twelve other people, Estelle received Communion and then, with her right hand, made the sign of the cross. The swelling in her arm immediately went down and the tumor that was on her arm disappeared. The two doctors that were there as witnesses agreed that there was no explanation for it, that it was a miracle. After that, Estelle enjoyed good health and a normal life, and Our Lady did not appear to her again until July. Without being bedridden now, Estelle was able to see Our Lady in her full entirety. She was dressed in white from her head to her feet, and she held out her hands from which multicolored raindrops dripped from her fingers. She raised a white tassel to her breast and crossed herself and then said, Be calm, my child. Have patience. You will have sorrows, but I will be with you. She let the tassel fall from her hands and said, Courage, I will come again. And then she disappeared. The next day she appeared again. It was Sunday, the Feast of the Visitation. Estelle was on her knees praying when Our Lady appeared. She looked as she had the night before, with drops of rain falling from her hands. But this time, a wreath of roses surrounded her in an oval frame. Crossing her arms over her breast, she said, You have already published my glory. And she then gave Estelle a secret that has never been revealed. Continue to publish my glory. My son also has some souls more attached to him. His heart has so much love for mine that he cannot refuse me any request. Through me, he will touch the most hardened hearts. When Our Lady disappeared, the wreath of roses and halo of light lingered for a little while longer before it too faded away. On Saturday, September 9th, Our Lady appeared to Estelle for the ninth time. After a moment of silence, she said to Estelle, you deprived yourself of my visit on the 15th of August because you were not sufficiently calm. You have indeed the French character, wishing to know all things before learning and to understand everything before knowing. I would have come to you yesterday, but again, you deprived yourself of my visit. I have been waiting for this act of submission and obedience from you. After a pause, she continued, For a long time, the treasures of my son have been opened, let them pray. She then lifted a small white woolen cloth which she wore on her breast. Estelle had noticed it before, but not given it much thought as it blended in with the white garments. Upon the cloth, she saw a red heart and realized that it was a scapular of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I love this devotion, Our Lady said tenderly. It is here that I will be honored. And then she disappeared. On September 10th, the following day, Our Lady appeared with her hands joined together and said, Let them pray. I showed them the example. On September 15th, Our Lady appeared for the eleventh time. Estelle writes, With the permission of my mistress, I had gone to my room to pray. It was about a quarter before three. 
the Blessed Mother appeared as usual with her arms extended and with abundant raindrops falling, as it were, from her hands. She remained a long time in silence, looking around the room. She told me certain things that bore reference to myself alone. Then she went on, I will remember the efforts you have made to be calm. It is not only for you, but also for the Church and for France. In the Church, there is not the calm that I desire. She sighed and shook her head, saying, Something is the matter. Here she paused, and Estelle understood that some discord was taking place in the Church. Our Lady said, Let them pray, and let them have confidence in me. Her face became very sad. And France? What have I not done for her? How many warnings, and nevertheless, she still refuses to listen. I can no longer restrain my son. She paused and said with much emphasis, France will suffer. She ended with courage and confidence. On the twelfth apparition, Our Lady came on November 1st, Feast of All Saints. For this vision, Our Lady stood only in silence, gazing around the room as though she could see something that Estelle could not. Then she looked at Estelle with great kindness and disappeared. Our Lady again appeared a few days later on November 5th. This was the 13th apparition. Estelle writes, At about 2.30, I went to my room to say the rosary. As soon as I had finished saying it, the Blessed Virgin stood before me. She looked more beautiful than ever. As I gazed upon her, I thought of how many more persons there were more deserving of her favors than myself and who could do more than I to make her glory known. Our Lady said, I have chosen you. I chose the little ones, the weak, for my glory. Courage, the time of your trials is approaching. She then crossed her arms over her breast and disappeared. On November 11th, Our Lady appeared for the 14th time. Estelle had made a scapular modeled after Our Lady's and went to her room to pray. When Our Lady appeared, she said approvingly, you have not lost your time today. You have worked hard for me. It will be necessary to make many more of the scapulars. After a long time, her face became sad and she said, Courage. And then she disappeared. On the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, Our Lady appeared for the last time. When she appeared, she again had the wreath of roses around her and said, Recall to mind all my words. Suddenly, every vision and every message that Estelle was given flashed through her mind, and Our Lady said, My child, remember my words. Repeat them often. May they strengthen and console you in your trials. You will see me no more. Estelle was startled and said, But what will become of me without you, my good mother? Our Lady responded, I will be invisibly near you. In the vision, Estelle then saw a crowd of angry people yelling at her in opposition, and she became afraid. Our Lady smiled and said, You have nothing to fear from these. I have chosen you to publish my glory and to spread this devotion. Our Lady then held her scapular out with both hands and said, Arise and kiss it. After kissing the scapular most reverently, Our Lady said to Estelle, You will go see the prelate. You will present to him the model scapular you have made. Tell him that he is to help you with all his power, and nothing will be more acceptable to me than to see this scapular on each one of my children, and that they all must endeavor all the outrages received by my son in the sacrament of his love. See the graces I will bestow on those who will wear it with confidence and who will assist you in propagating it. Our Lady then stretched out her hands, and from them fell an abundant rain, each drop symbolizing a particular grace, such as piety, salvation, confidence, health, conversion, any grace needed for the good of a soul. These graces are from my son. I have taken them from his heart. He can refuse me nothing. After more instructions pertaining to the scapular, Our Lady said for the last time, Fear nothing. I will assist you. She then disappeared for the last time. On April 30th, 1876, with the permission of the Archbishop, Estelle had an ex-photo plaque of Thanksgiving placed in the parish church. On December 8th, her bedroom was transformed into an oratory. A few days later, the Archbishop received her for a private audience and granted permission for her to make and distribute copies of the Scapular of the Sacred Heart. Estelle lived a long life and died at the age of 86, a few weeks shy of her 87th birthday, on August 23, 1929.